an overview on uh, S&T and how to do business with us. Um, S&T, in brief, we have about 1,200 personnel between contractors and federal employees. We have five internal laboratories in New York, Maryland, and soon to be in Kansas. And we have, we run two of our own federally funded research and development centers, and we have access to the broader DOE uh, lab network. We have a network of 150 university programs as part of our centers of excellence, which study uh, research um, across Homeland Security needs. We collaborate across multiple sectors to uh, come to um, Homeland Security objectives, and we're also supporting um, our DHS component customers as well as the broader, what we call the Homeland Security Enterprise, which is really relates out to first responders and others who might have the same interests as our DHS customers. And we're hoping to establish an enduring capability in Homeland Security Science and Technology by setting things up for a future uh, workforce. Uh, the s and mission, we are out to develop and implement technology solutions addressing homeland security pressing challenges. So we align ourselves across the five broader DHS mission areas, which you can see on the slide, and we work collaborati collaboratively with both public and private sectors um, to reach these uh, goals. And we're always looking for new and innovative solutions. At the end of the day, that's why we are at s and to address new problems that our DHS components are having. And a number, there are a number of drivers that we use in pursuit of our mission, and it's summed up in this approach that our leadership calls CHAMPS. And so it's um, component and customer driven. Um, we're also looking at being Homeland Security Enterprise focused, agile and responsive, being able to um, pivot and address new technology needs as they come up. We're making use of existing technologies, being aware of what's happening in the market, seeing prototypes, understanding where industry is going. Um, we also want to make sure that we're setting up our research um, to, for transfer and commercialization. So at the end of the day, if we're funding R&D and it's not going anywhere, that you know we didn't really provide the ultimate solution. We want to make sure that we get things out into the hands of our end users. And then we're also making sure that our workforce has scientific and engineering excellence. So if, for those of you who are not familiar with s and we went through a revitalization in this past October 2018, and it was really focused on making sure that we're aligned to DHS operational component needs, um, and you can see it reflected in our org chart. Um, industry partnerships uh, that I manage is in our Office of Innovation and Collaboration, which I would describe as sort of the toolbox for our program managers. We have, not in addition to industry partnerships, we have our FFRDCs, our international programs, our national laboratories. Um, and then our mission and capability support uh, office is really where our component customers uh, the program portfolios align. And we're partnering today with um, the Physical and Cybersecurity Division um, and our CISA customers. And you can see that each of our three divisions, border, Borders, Immigration and Maritime, and we have a number of DHS components under that, First Responders and Detection, and then Physical and Cybersecurity. And then we also have our Office of Science and Engineering, which is a lot of the technical uh, SME work in our tech centers. They're looking at enduring research problems that cross the individual division areas. So in terms of um, the focus of s and reaching out to industry, we have a number of missions. We, we need to educate DHS's mission and challenges out to industry. Um, there are a lot of missions within DHS. It's a vast organization. And we need to help break down what the, what the needs are at the end of the day that we're looking for to better guide industry. We're looking to expand our network. We need to engage new innovators who provide their unique perspectives. We don't want just the same old thing all the time. We need to increase our capabilities, and we're doing that by going out and talking to people about our open solicitations so we can bring people in and understand what the technology is. We're also maintaining an awareness of industry capabilities. Understanding where the market is um, also helps us align better for our component needs. And then we need to continue to strengthen our existing relationships. We have a very strong um, partnership network already in existence, and we need to make sure that we're keeping people engaged. And the technology and innovation uh, exchanges, it's a new program that we're starting this year, and this is our first event, but what we're hoping is a, a series of events throughout the year um, and it's really focused on a lot of these mission areas, but it's taking S&T out of D.C. 
to a number of cities nationwide on a specific topic with a component customer to try to engage with new people who haven't heard of us before, might be interested in working with us, might need to know a little bit more about us, and really understand what a specific customer need is. So we're, this is the first of the event, and we look forward to hearing your feedback, um, but we also hope to be able to promote additional events going forward, and we'll make sure to keep everyone aware of that. So the first piece of what we uh, do with industry is we're trying to incentivize innovation, and we have a number of tools that we use to do that, and I'll get into most of these. Um, we have a broad agency announcements, including a long-range BAA as well as a targeted BAA. We also do prize competitions. We have our Small Business Innovative Research Program and our Silicon Valley Innovation Program. So broad agency announcements are solicitations that usually contain multiple topics that allow the flexibility of a, an offer's response. Um, we use our long-range broad agency announcement. It's a five-year open solicitation that uh, has a number of topics across um, s and and DHS's mission areas that are accepted on a rolling basi basis. Um, and they're very broad, usually one to two sentence topic areas. And we're really trying to just have people come in with their ideas that fall under these areas. And they're used to, um, the long range is used to um, look at ongoing areas of need um, that address overall DHS mission areas. In contrast to that, uh, we also do a significant number of targeted BAAs, which are more defined than a typical long range BAA, and they're only accepting submissions for a short period of time. And um, they're usually more defined than a topic that you'd find on the long range. And it's really focused on meeting a need um, that's out there, and there's a requirement to find and develop a solution in a set period of time. So a little more about our long-range BAA. Uh, we're looking at basic and applied research. We can provide funding for one to three years. Uh, we're looking at prototypes that might already be in existence that we can pivot towards DHS capabilities, and also mature technology improvements and assessments. And the long range is open to everyone, um, private sector, uh, industry, academia, um, as well as national laboratories and other R&D uh, organizations. And we are, are updating our topics quarterly. Um, so, you know, if things aren't there that you might be interested in, keep an eye out and new topics should come up. Our prize, <clears throat> prize challenge program, this is looking at a non-traditional approach to problem solving. So each federal agency has the authority to um, do prize challenges. And it's our, our prize authority from the DHS secretary has been delegated down to s &T, And we run prizes in support of our s and mission areas as well as directly with our component customers. So this is really looking at crowdsourcing um, innovation, looking at challenges that can be met quickly with innovative solutions. And this really gets down to just individuals can apply for, for prizes. Um, so this is looking at people who wouldn't normally propose to a large scale government solicitation. And uh, we've had a lot of success uh, finding new and interesting topics coming out of these. We just um, announced eight winners in our phase one of an opioid detection challenge, for example, and that was an international challenge. So this is a few more details about prize challenges, where you can look to find them. We don't have any open at the moment, but we expect to have more um, in the fall. And uh, everyone is eligible, um, and um, we're seeking new and novel capabilities. Our SBIR program, We've had a program at S&T since 2004, and it's really focused on the commercialization and delivery of operational prototypes. And this is one of the great examples of um, US public and private partnerships across federal agencies. It's really focusing on fostering participation from groups that, you know, small business um, and socially and economically disadvantaged persons. Um, and it's increasing the commercialization and innovation um, of R&D across the government. Some unique elements of the SBIR program. Uh, there are, it's broken up into three phases. Phase one is a six month uh, proof of feasibility. Phase two is up to 24 months. Um, and um, that usually results in a prototype. And then those are both funded by, via SIBR set aside funding. And then phase three can be funded via anyone's program dollars across the government. So um, you have to be a small business with no more than uh, 500 employees. And um, 
These really support Homeland Security mission areas. We do a solicitation annually. It usually comes out in November or December. Um, we just, in June, awarded our 1,000th um, SBIR contract at DHS. So we're very excited about that, and it really shows the commitment we have to the program, and we've gotten a lot of successes out of it across different program areas. Our Silicon Valley Innovation Program uh, is, was launched in late 2015, <clears throat> and we're leveraging commercial R&D ecosystems for government uh, applications, co-investing in ideas, and accelerating transition. And we've been working with a number of customers to develop topic areas, and as well as our first responder and finance sectors. And then we're also in discussions with a, a few more components and hope to have topics with them come in the future. So this is, you know, non-FAR-based OT, other transaction authority um, efforts and we are looking to keep pace with the innovation community and tackle the hard problems. So these are things that already exist by people who wouldn't necessarily work with us and just need to understand a little bit more about the DHS mission space to connect the technology that they have to how we might be able to use it going forward. So we're educating investors and entrepreneurs. We're funding up to 800K um, for product development, and then we're also doing tests and evaluation and pilot assessments of the technologies. And so the, the method right now is to go from a proof of concept to a fielded prototype in 24 months. And um, <clears throat> when things are going well, the idea is that you get from a call, an application, a pitch, and a decision, and then an award is made within 45 days. So this is really speeding up the normal government solicitation and selection process. Um, and you can see the various stages we have right now, the phases we have right now, which have different funding uh, levels, periods of performance, and different um, spots in the product development timeline. And just some accomplishments that we've had. We've funded 35 startups across 14 different topic areas, and we've had four successful tra transitions to CBP so far. And uh, we expect to have that number increase going forward over the next six to nine months. So the other piece of our industry engagement, you know, if we have all these tools at the front end and we get the research going and we're providing the best capabilities we can to get that ha to happen, we need to make sure that something's happening at the back end. We need to get the technology out into the end user's hands. So we focus a lot on the commercialization of tech uh, coming out of S&T as well as other mission relevant technologies. And it really is, commercialization of technology is really tech transfer as well as acceleration and partnerships. It really is a, is a cycle. And so some of you may be familiar, um, in our uh, cybersecurity division, we had a program called um, Transition to Practice. And it was focused on taking cybersecurity technologies that have been funded at the national labs, FFRDCs, academia, and really taking them and getting them over the valley of death and getting them to market. And we were able to license 20 technologies coming out of that program. And we've expanded it now beginning this year into our commercial accelerator program. And we are trying to look at broader homeland security mission areas beyond cybersecurity. And we'll be starting that up um, shortly. And we also support um, all of the department's cooperative research and development agreements, CRADAs, which is an opportunity for industry to partner with the government. And usually it's involving demonstrations or prototype sessions of technologies um, for short periods of time. And we're also uh, able to enter into partnership intermediary agreements, which are specific vehicles looking at how to broaden our uh, ability to transfer technologies. Finally, the last piece we have is our Safety Act program. So this is the Support uh, Anti-Terrorism by Fostering Effective Technologies Act, which came out in 2002. Um, and it's focused on ensuring that the threat of liabilities doesn't de deter manufacturers and sellers of effective techno anti-terrorism technologies from developing and commercializing their, their technology. Um, so it really is made based on a determination by the secretary whether something is an act of terrorism or not. But um, to date, there have been a, we have a range of available protections. Um, there's a lot of technologies that could be uh, available, qualify for Safety Act protections. Um, you can see a, a wide range here. We look a lot at venue security and things like that, a lot of screening that comes out of TSA. But I would encourage everyone to think about technologies that you may have that could uh, benefit from a Safety Act designation or certification. So I just want to highlight a couple of events that we're going to be at going forward. Uh, we'll be at Black Hat 
um, in uh, August in Vegas. We will, ST has a booth along with uh, other DHS uh, partners. We also participate in the SBA SBIR Roadshow. Um, the Northeast uh, portion of that tour is um, in September, and we'll be participating in that. We'll also be at the, it's MWC 19 Los Angeles. It's the former uh, Mobile World Congress of Americas conference, and that's in October. We'll have an event there as well with our partners. And then we have a sign at showcase uh, in November in DC. So we are all over social media. Um, please connect with us however you prefer. Mm -hmm.